All right, geometry fans, so our topic for today is we're going to classify triangles, but then we're also going to look at uh, angle measures involved with triangles. So the first thing we'll do is we'll talk about classifying, how we name them. Well, the first thing we'll do, let's go ahead and draw a triangle. And we'll call this triangle A, B, C. When you name the triangle, what we do is we use a triangle symbol and then we write the three points or the three vertices of the triangle. So you can write ABC. You could also write it as triangle CAB. You could write it as triangle BCA. It doesn't matter the order of the points when you name a triangle. So you can start with any of the points and you can move either direction. You can move clockwise or you can move counterclockwise, and both are going to be good. Okay, now, what does it mean to be a triangle? Well, a triangle is a polygon. A triangle is a polygon with three sides. Polygon with three sides. So a polygon is just a closed figure in a plane. So any type of figure that's closed up where the uh, segments are going to meet like this. So here's a triangle. When you have a triangle, you have three sides and you also have three angles. Now the three sides, when we name those, those are segments. So for example, we have segment AB. We have segment BC. We have segment AC. And then in a triangle, we also have three angles. Now we can name these with just one letter with the vertex. So angle A is right here. We've got angle B is down here. That's angle B. And then we have angle C. Angle A, angle B, angle C. So when you, uh, when you look at a triangle, we're going to be looking at side length. We're also going to be looking at angle measure. And there are going to be a lot of relationships that come with both of these. Now, some triangles that you're familiar with, to classify, the word classify means to name. So to classify basically means to give the triangle a name based on how it looks, based on the information that you know. So for example, one thing, one type of triangle is um, something like this. If we have a triangle, and we'll say all three sides, now those marks mean that they are congruent. So if I call this triangle ABC, when you see these symbols right here, that tells you that segment AB is congruent to segment BC is congruent to segment AC. So all three sides are the same, and that is called equilateral. There's really two ways that you can name a triangle. One way is to name it or classify it by the sides. So equilateral, and what that means is that is a triangle with all sides congruent. And I'll just use a congruent symbol for that. Now, another way to classify a triangle by the sides, another name, is if we have a triangle with two sides that are the same. And this is what we would call isosceles. I-S-O-S-C-E LES. So that is called isosceles. And isosceles means a triangle with at least two sides congruent. With at least two sides congruent. Now what that means is that normally if I put the third side as congruent, you could call it isosceles. That would be true, but normally we would call it equilateral. Equilateral is basically a special kind of isosceles triangle. 
So we've got equilateral, all sides congruent. Isosceles, at least two sides congruent. And the third thing would be if no sides are congruent, And notice I'm going to label these with different numbers of marks, one mark, two marks, three marks. That means that they're different. And the name that we give that is scalene. So a scalene triangle is a triangle with no sides congruent. So if we're going to name a triangle according to the sides, the possibilities are equilateral, isosceles, scalene. Now, what if we try to classify it by angle measure? Okay, so now let's look at angles. And this is going to be, these are different. Well, there's actually four ways that we can do this. So with angles, um, one example would be an acute triangle. One would be obtuse, one would be right, and then the last one is what we call equiangular. So equilateral is all the sides, lateral is like side, um, equiangular is going to be all the angles are congruent. All right, so let's draw an example here, um, and we'll write the definition as well. An acute triangle means all the angles, here I'm going to write an angle symbol, we'll say less than 90, less than 90 degrees. Now something that we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes here is that in a triangle, all three angle measures always add up to 180. So for example, if I say this is 50 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and this is 70 degrees. Okay, and I'm going to put degree symbols for angles. Those add up to 180, but you notice that all of the angles are less than 90. This is an acute triangle. An obtuse triangle is where you have one angle greater than 90. And now what I'll do is I'm going to put a little greater than symbol. One angle is greater than 90 degrees. So for example, it could look like this. And let's say that this right here was 100 degrees. Now you might say, well, what about the other two angles? Why is it only one angle greater than 90? Well, you know that the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. So if this is 100, this, both of these have to be less than 90. Because if I say one of the, something else is, let's say, 100, that's going to be too much. 100 plus 100 is greater than 180. That doesn't make sense. So that would be obtuse. A right triangle means one angle equals 90 degrees. All right, this is real important. We're going to have a whole chapter on this later on in the semester. So a right triangle has to have a right angle. And uh, we've already looked at these a little bit. We talked about Pythagorean theorem, um, where you have these are the legs, and then this is the hypotenuse right here. So there's leg, there's leg, and the longest side is called the hypotenuse. And then equiangular means all the angles congruent. So all angles congruent. Now in this case, that means if we draw this here, all of the angles would have to be 60. So this would be 60, 60, 60. This, you could say, is acute. That is an acute triangle. And one other thing that we'll learn is that if it's equiangular, if the angles are congruent, so are the opposite sides. So you could also say this is equilateral. One last thing, and we'll go back up to the, the isosceles, a little bit of vocabulary. In an isosceles triangle, the two sides that are congruent those are called the legs. The third side, in this case the bottom, we call that the base. 
And then the angle that gets created by the two legs. So the angle right here, that's called the vertex angle. Okay, so I'm going to call that the vertex angle. Okay, so that's a little bit of vocabulary. So that's how you classify a triangle.